we always want to account for the unexpected. So when you are, so, so let's do a scenario. Okay. Let's say that you are looking at a foreclosure that you are interested in uh, putting a bid on mm -hmm. and let's say it's occupied, you know, yeah. let's say you can't get in there. So what is your formula? What is your calculation? How do you decide what is the most that you're going to bid on that property? Given the fact you can't get inside, what do you, you know, what's that formula look like? Mm -hmm. Well, let's assume that you or, or an attorney can do a title check. So you can, you can make sure that, you know, property taxes are up to speed or that there's no unusual liens or unpaid utility bills. Let's just assume that side is okay. So now you need to work out, you know, two, two main things you know, what, what's it worth after being renovated and how much is it going to cost to renovate it? And obviously that's not easy if you can't get inside. So, you know, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the MLS to see, has it been sold in the last 15 years and, and get a look at some previous listing photos? Because maybe it was sold in 2010 and 13 and 15, or maybe it was listed for rent or maybe it was listed and taken down. But you can see certain things like, has it got some tile floors? Was the kitchen modernized in 2015? What is it, you know, how old you can look online, see how old is the roof and the AC, they're major big ticket items. Um, so sometimes you get an idea from that, but a house could look great in 2016 or 2017. And, you know, the wrong kind of person lives there for three years and you're, you're back to square one. So, you know, more often than not, we're kind of, with the exception of, of kind of roofs and ACs, which you can kind of tell from permit records and drive-bys. So, you, you know, once you drive by a property, if it's nice and clean outside with landscape gardens and a nice car in the driveway and there's a little bit of curb appeal you know it's it's more likely to be quite nice inside as well maybe a little data but there, if it's taken care of outside it's taken care of inside but if you're driving past and there's some big dogs and there's a bunch of junk in the front yard and a bunch of tires and mattresses and you know riffraff it's, it's going to be you know pretty similar inside as well but for the most part you need to know What's it going to cost to renovate a kitchen in this area, to paint a house in this area, to replace the floors, replace the bathrooms, light fixtures, window repairs, fences, landscaping. You need to have kind of, you need to know your numbers for all of those. And one thing that, that stood to our benefit was that we specialized in a particular, you know, part of Tampa where there was tons of houses that were the same. So renovating, you know, hundreds of these single story 1970s concrete block, 1100 to 1500 single family homes with two or three crews. And we kind of knew those costs very well. So you just, once you know those costs, you generally are safe to assume you're going to need everything unless there's a one year old MLS photo showing different. Um, and then you, you allow, you know, your holding costs, your insurance costs, your, your, your private money costs, uh, your, your sales costs on the other side. And, and you just work out a bid price after you plug all those numbers in and, just be conservative. I mean, I, you know, I've been, let's just say I've been unpleasantly surprised far more often than I've been pleasantly surprised. Once you get into a house that you've bought sight unseen, I mean, literally one or two out of maybe 150 I've walked in and it's like, Oh my God, I literally just need to clean this house and it's good to go. And it's just high fives all around. But sometimes you might think, you know, I saw a picture two years ago and that kitchen looks pretty good. I think we might get away with it. Most of the time you walk in and this, no, you got to tear it out, you know? Well, you know, you said something a moment ago that actually goes against the grain of one principle that most people have heard. And that is you can't judge a book by its cover, but I did hear you say when it comes to foreclosures, if the outside is looking pretty good, chances are the inside is looking pretty good, right? That, that has been surprisingly consistent over the years. I mean, it is a very good rule of thumb, certainly in suburban, you know, middle-class areas where I operate it is, um, yeah, it, it tends to be that way.